My name is Gavin Evans and this is my list of my favorite TV shows of 2022. Now I did try to watch as many shows as I'm going to before I made this list. The only one I didn't quite get to is 1883. It's the Yellowstone spin-off show. I've heard great things. I do own it. It just doesn't fit into my schedule right now so that's why it's not on my list and maybe it wouldn't make my list. I don't know. And if there's any other shows that aren't on this list, it's either because they just barely missed out or because I hate it. And just saying that lots of loved shows from 2022 that I heard amazing things about, I did not like. <laughs> I also do want to keep this list spoiler free. There are some shows here that I'm trying to get my brother to watch. And I don't want to give anything away. So I'm going to be a bit more vague than I usually am here. And yeah. And also it's going to be best 7 TV shows of 2022. I know that's a very odd number. But it's what I came up with. So my 7th favorite show of 2022 is The Rehearsal. Nathan Feldor is absolutely hilarious. And this is such a weird out there show that's just unlike anything else. You think it's ridiculous at the start, but he keeps finding a way to make it more and more ridiculous. When <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't even know how to describe this show to people who haven't seen it. It's either you're on its wavelengths and you laugh or you hate it. There is no in between. Now, I don't think this is the amazing show that so many others are making out to be, but it's one I definitely enjoyed. My sixth favorite show of 2022 is Rick and Morty season six. And the first three seasons of this show are golden. Seasons four and five are terrible. And I was dreading this sixth season being like, okay, if it's not good, I'm just going to give up this show. But I actually found it to be a small recovery in a step in the right direction. It's smart. It's funny. And it's got the insanity that I love about this show. Especially one episode where in order to get more done, in order to be more productive, the uh, family make it so their night selves do all this extra work and then there was some conflict there that felt like a classic Rick and Morty episode. There's one with a video game where there's a bunch of different Mortys which I definitely laughed at. There was one with dinosaurs coming to Earth and solving all of our issues and yet we're still not satisfied that I really liked. Um, it doesn't get to the height of the earlier seasons but I definitely enjoyed this much more than the other two previous seasons. My fifth favorite show of 2022 is going to be a hot take but it's Better Call Saul season 6. I know almost everyone else has this as the best show, but I do have problems with it. The last few episodes slow down way too much, and I didn't like the ending, but everything up until that point is absolutely phenomenal. I've got a review series for it coming out this year, but Bob Odenkirk, Rhea Seahorn, Patrick Fabian are just so good here. I also love Ginekilo Esposito and Jonathan Banks, but Tony Dalton as Lalo, he's such a likable psychopath. <laughs> like, he's got so much charisma. You've also got a great performance from Michael Mando, so the entire cast does a great job, and I love everything they're trying to do here. The way that you kind of get the sense of just how pathetic the main character is, and it makes for some funny moments, but the way they're able to ground that in real emotion and tragedy and that makes for some of the most tense and compelling stuff of the entire show made me very happy. So I still loved so much of this final season. Just wish they got the last few episodes a bit better. My fourth favorite episode, my fourth favorite show of 2022 is The White Lotus Season 2. I really enjoyed the first season, but I didn't know if we needed a second one, and I thought it was an improvement in every possible way. 
just all these different characters and their relationships with one another and the way that everything progresses or escalates or however you want to view it, I found to be enthralling. I thought Aubrey Plaza's character with her uh, whole relationship with her boyfriend and the way that changes throughout with some incredible writing and she gives one of the best performances of her career. I thought everything with Haley Lou Richardson and how she just lacks any bit of self-esteem and she's just down at the start and how she gains a bit of confidence and you see it in her looks and how she acts and the way that escalates. Uh, you've got a great performance from Jennifer Coolidge. You've got just, I don't know how to just talk about a few elements because there's so many different characters and actors that to list them off would be repetitive but the point is it has some great characters, some great interesting relationships. It's hilarious. It takes a while to get going, but once it gets going, it doesn't stop. And yeah, I, I love this season. My third favorite show of 2022 is one I personally found to be very good, and it's Barry Season 3. This is the best season yet. Bill Hadel. I don't even think... Like, did he get nominated? I hope he got nominated. If he not, it's absolutely criminal. He's incredible here. There was just so many layers to this character and he hits the comedic beats, the dramatic beats. And he also directs some of this season and he does a fantastic job. You've got Sarah Goldberg who was snubbed for a bunch of awards which is criminal because this is her best work yet. She's Phenomenal. One scene especially in the last episode. Henry Winkler too, in the last episode. Just incredible work. And I just feel like they push these characters in just compelling ways. And Barry, he was always flawed, but you always wanted him to do better. But now the show just tests. Do you really think he deserves a second chance? Do you really think that he deserves better at this point? And they just they keep digging a deeper and deeper hole for the character and really great stuff. Um, it's way less funny now than it's ever been before but the drama is just ramped up to an unbelievable level and I loved it. Um, there's one scene in particular where Barry wants to open up and communicate more with Sally and that scene just a masterclass of writing and tension and just feeling uncomfortable just love the show I don't know how they can keep it going past season four so but either way I can't wait my second favorite show of 2022 is going to be a controversial pick because everybody used to love this show and now everybody hates it and I still love it and it's euphoria season two Look, if you've got some issues with the writing, I completely understand. I thought some of the storyline with Ash took itself far too seriously, wasn't needed. I thought the one storyline with the drug dealer just gets completely forgotten. The last episode with the play and Cassie was a bit too much. Not everything with Nate and his dad worked for me. But the craftsmanship here is just undeniable. What Sam Levinson brings to this show is just some of the finest directing I've ever seen. This show is beautiful to look at. It is so well shot. It's filled with atmosphere and the way he uses music to elevate so many moments. Like, it is just top tier filmmaking or TV show making. The editing just, he clearly has a vision for each and every scene and he's trying new and different things out. Like the second last episode when we are going through the play of Lexi and the way it transitions from on the stage to real life, it's just unbelievable work. Like this guy is a master of his craft. I clearly don't agree with him politically, but directing wise, just wow. I, I feel like this is one of the best made, best directed shows ever. 
And even though I got issues with the writing, I also love lots of it. So many of the characters feel fully defined, fully realized. Like, Wu, are you really telling me that at the beginning of episode 5, your heart didn't break for her? And how you're not rooting for this character to do better? Because I know I was certainly invested in her storyline. And then we've got everything with Cassie, which is just showing how desperate this girl is and just how unhappy it's making her and how she's sabotaging every relationship she has. I found it to be really great writing there too. And then you've also got Dominic Fluke as as a new character and I thought he added a nice two dynamic to Wu's and Jewel's relationship that fleshed everyone out farther. So even though the craftsmanship is what I love about the show, there's still some very strong writing here and there is some real emotion and the performances are incredible. I want to mention Nikki King, who doesn't get the credit she deserves for this show. She's great. Storm Reed's great. Coleman Domingo is great. But there's two standouts, Ozendaya and Sydney Sweeney. They are just incredible here. And also, Maddie's a much more likable character this season. So, yeah, I love this show. And it came out on DVD, and I'm happy I own it. But my favorite show of 2022 is Stranger Things Season 4. This is the biggest, most ambitious season of television I think I've ever seen. The fact that you've got this plot... Well, these kids are being haunted by a monster that kills them in their dreams. And then you've also got this plot of the main characters getting chased down by the bullies. Then you've also got the plot of the parents turning on their kids due to the rise of satanic panic. Then you've got Mike and Will in this espionage plot. You've got Eleven going back to her past and finding things out. You've got Harpo in a Russian prison. And you've also got Joyce and Maury trying to rescue him. There is so much going on, so many characters, so much story, and yet it all worked for me. I was entertained just as much with one story as I was with the other. And I'm just like, this season of television, it's huge and it feels like it. You've got a terrific villain in Vecna. The, I love Nightmare on Elm Street and the fact you've got this monster killing kids in their dreams was just the best kind of throwback. But he just has this menacing presence to him where you feel like, Getting so close to him could kill you. And I love the practical effects they had. You've also got a lot of great other characters, but I loved Lori. He was such an unpredictable blast. And the way they used so many of the pre-existing characters, like I'm not going to get into everyone. I've got my review coming out, I think, next month. But Max. Sadie Sink gives the best performance of this show so far. They give so much emotional depth to her character and how she doesn't just feel terrible about what happened to Billy, but the fact that she never got to know Billy the way she wanted to know him. And how she just ends up isolating herself and sabotaging off her relationships and how Vecna takes advantage of that, only for her to have to overcome her depression and her hopelessness and to cling to the memories of the people she loves. And then running up the hell starts playing. That is some of the finest television I've ever seen in my life and I'll never forget watching it for the very first time. And then I also thought some of the moments between her and 
Uh, Lucas, Kill McLawson's character, was great in his performance in the last episodes. Also fantastic. I love how you've got how they really explore the upside down in some of the camera work there. I absolutely loved. Some of it reminded me of Insidious with how they're trying to communicate with each other from a different realm. You've also got some just I, I don't know how to just talk about this show this season in just a few minutes. There is so much going on and so much of it's fantastic. The use of separate ways at the end of episode 8 is phenomenal. Like, it's every episode is incredibly long, but it actually feels dissolved. It feels warned. And I didn't like the last episode at all. I thought it was terrible, and it bums me out this episode didn't end on a stronger note, but... Everything up until that point is just some of the finest television I've ever seen. I had a blast watching it. I was emotionally invested. I was tense. And I, I, I just loved it. So that's why it's my favorite show of 2022. So what are your favorite shows of 2022? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon. And Gavin, out.